if you don't have the Yirat Shamayim, you may fall. Now, Amalek, his job is to make sure you fall. How? By putting that doubt in your mind. So when you're already weak, and the Yetzirah shows up with a TV show, with a movie, with a girl, with a guy, with a casino, with something, that doubt now gives birth to an action. And then, what ends up happening is the person says, you know what, ever since I've become religious, my life really became much more difficult. You know, ever since I started keeping Shabbat, I'm making less money instead of more money like uh, I'm supposed to. Like I think I suppose I'm supposed to. Ever since I became religious, I've been sick. Ever since I've become religious, such and such has been happening. Meaning that there is a remorse. Is a remorse in your mitzvot. That you fulfilled the mitzvot, but you, you're not really sure. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done it. So, now, if you fall off, I don't have to tell you what happens. But what happens if you just simply say it? You simply say, you know what? Ever since I've become religious, my life sucks. Is that a big deal? Is that a sin? How many of you think it's a sin? One, two. How big of a sin from one to ten? Like one. One. Ten. ten. Why ten? There's a big, big machloket between you guys. It's, it's a bet shamay, bet hilel. No? Oh, actually, you're bet shamay. Bet shamay is a... On the head. No? Ten, you basically regret all your mitzvot. Then Why? Mitzvot Why is it ten, though? Why is it like chazil? Chazil, chazil, or gilu erayot, or eating pig, or uh, having a moral crime, killing somebody. That's a ten. That's a ten. So you rate, you rate regretting the mitzvot the same way as murder? Yes. Why? Because you lose everything you, you ever did. Chazaku baruch. Chazaku baruch. The Rambam, in the Chot Shuvah, chapter 3, Alakha number 3, says the following. Anyone who changes his mind about the mitzvot that he has performed and regrets the merits that he has earned saying in his heart, not even saying out loud, in his heart, he says, what value was it in doing this? What value do I get out of keeping Shabbat? What value do I get of keeping my Brit? What do I get out of this? Be'emek, no, come on, my life is not really that great anyway. I wish I hadn't performed them. Why? Because I'd still be with Christine. I'd still be with Jose. I'd still be, you know, going to the movies every weekend with my friends. I'd still be playing poker, Texas Hold'em with uh, Daniel Negrano and the rest of the degenerates. I really, I'd still be doing all this fun stuff. So the Rambam says, if he says these things in his heart, he loses all of his mitzvot and no merit is preserved for him at all. Meaning, not only has he now made his sin, that he said something that as if the mitzvot are not worth very much, but all the work that he's done already for the last year, two years, three years, five years, 50, 60 years, he's 70 years old, he's been religious for 50 years. Imagine how many mitzvot a person has in 50 years. All of it, gone. All of the merit, gone. Everything goes to the basket. He wants to go to Ganeda and he has to start all over again. Meaning, he goes, if he dies the next day, he goes up to Shammai and says, Well, sorry, sir, uh, you have nothing. Your uh, spiritual bank account is in bankruptcy. Wow, what do you mean? I, 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 I put filin, I did this. You did, yeah, but you said uh, that it's not worth anything. So we said it's not worth anything. It's not worth anything. Where does the Rambam write to get this from? The prophet Yechizkel says in chapter 33, verse 12, The righteousness of the upright will not save him on the day of his transgression. So this is specifically applies to somebody who regrets the previous dids, meaning not just what he's doing now, but what he did in the past. Not like, you know, it's really hard to keep Shabbat, I don't feel like doing it anymore. That's one thing, you don't lose the past for that. Only if you say, you know what, I wish I didn't, 
I wish I didn't keep Shabbat. I wish I didn't go into a kosher business. I wish I was still in the uh, cash advance, uh, murdering people's bank accounts uh, business. I wish I was still uh, going out with Christine and Jose. I wish I, wish I was still there. Rambam says, okay, that person wishes, he gets his wish. He loses everything. And just as a person's merits and sins are weighed at the time of his death, so too the sins of every inhabitant in the world, together with his merits, are weighed on the festival of Rosh Hashanah. If one is found righteous, his verdict is sealed for life. But if, if one is found wicked, his verdict is sealed for death. So... Here we see Rabotai is a very, very big deal. But if he repents, if he does tshuva, he can get life again. If not, he get death. The point is, Rabotai Karim, is that a Jew is supposed to train himself before the Yetzirah arrives, before the Yetzirah arrives, to not allow any of this nonsense into his mind or her mind because if you do, you could literally lose all the work that you've done. Now, even if somebody has made this mistake and has said it, that doesn't mean that you should continue making sins. Start all over, Bezat Hashem, you'll be a matzliach. You'll, uh, you'll do tshuva, and if your tshuva is really, really serious, you could even turn all of your avirot, all of your sins into mitzvot. But the point being is that we learn from the halacha, we learn from the laws, the laws of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that a Jew is supposed to not only be careful with his actions, but even with his thoughts. Even with his thoughts. Now this is a lacha, this is not an opinion. 